You are above every other Your love amazes me You created every beautiful color For everyone to see I want the world to know I want my life to show Just what your love has done for me Super duper awesome cheap apartment as long as I do a little work around the place It's a great chance for me to hang out with you while we talk about forgiveness Forgiveness is deciding that someone who has wronged you doesn't have to pay Forgiveness can make things fresh and new <laughs> It's one of the best tools you've got for getting along with well every other person on the planet <laughs> Today we're going to need these tools a flathead screwdriver and a Phillips head screwdriver <sighs> I need to fix a little problem I encountered this morning. See, I can't get into my bedroom. The door has been a little wonky since I moved in, but usually all it takes is just a little encouragement. Please, please, please open. There's only one way to fix this. We're gonna replace the doorknob! Step one, remove the latch plate using a Phillips head screwdriver. <sighs> The faceplate, of course, is right here. It's right, it's in the side of the door. It's, it's on the other side! Ah! So, I will need the door open in order to repair the door that won't open! That's a pretty tall order, way up here. In today's story, you'll meet someone with a pretty tall challenge to overcome. Aha! Open sesame! 
Neil's worth a try. I gotta figure this out. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke. Chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Few people in the town of Jericho were more disliked than Zacchaeus. Is it my personality? Something I said? Wait, it's because I'm vertically challenged, isn't it? Zacchaeus was very short. I call discrimination. In fact, you might even say he was a wee little man. Stop that. Now, his height wasn't the reason that nobody liked him. Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector, which meant he gathered all the money that people owed to the Roman government and kept a little something for himself. That will be five gold coins. Five gold coins? Last year it was two! In fact, Zacchaeus became quite wealthy, taking more money from his neighbors than he was supposed to. The Romans keep you safe. You should appreciate it. The Romans? You're the one using all the extra to build that fancy house! You still owe five gold coins! Fine! Next! What's this? A chicken? I can see that! Your family owes two gold coins! We don't have any money! Just a few chickens! Highly irregular! Bring me two chickens and we'll call it a deal until you get me the money! But we need the egg. Two chickens. One morning, the streets of Jericho were busier than usual. Crowds of people began to stream past the spot where Zacchaeus was collecting money. Hey, you owe a tax, and you owe a tax, and you owe a tax. Where's everyone going? Jesus is coming. What? Where? He's on his way to Jerusalem for the Passover. When will he be here? Oh, like you care. You're too busy cheating people. Hey. I'm just doing my job. Even Zacchaeus knew about Jesus, the amazing teacher who was healing sick people and welcoming outcasts and little children. And as he saw this crowd surging down the road, he too felt compelled to see Jesus, so he joined the throng. Ooh, watch out! Zacchaeus managed to squeeze past the crowds to the place where Jesus would pass, but all he could see was a sea of legs and arms and backs. Maybe if I jump! Ouch! There he is! He's coming! Oh, wow! He's coming. It's really him! I can't see believe Jesus. it! Zacchaeus was shoved back to the side of the road and found himself smashed up against a branching sycamore fig tree. That's it! Desperate, Zacchaeus grabbed the lowest branch and hauled himself up. I, I gotta start working out again. <sighs> limb by limb, Zacchaeus struggled up the tree he saw a crowd of people coming his way. And there was a man in the center of that crowd who seemed unfazed by all the chaos around him. He surveyed the crowd with compassion in his eyes. That must be Jesus. Zacchaeus inched out on his branch a little further for a better view. At that moment, Jesus stopped and stared right up into the tree. Zacchaeus felt his heart beat hard. Zacchaeus! Zacchaeus nearly fell out of the tree. How does he know my name? Come down at once. I must stay at your house today. <gasps> Jesus knew Zacchaeus' name. He knew about every wrong thing Zacchaeus had done, and yet he decided to look past all of that and invite himself to dinner. Yes, yes, Lord, I, I, I'm coming. In that moment, Zacchaeus stopped worrying about his height or how foolish he looked. Swinging from the branch, he dropped awkwardly onto the ground, right in front of Jesus. Uh, uh, please, uh, have dinner at my home. Zacchaeus rushed ahead to prepare for Jesus. On the way, he invited anybody else who would come along, uh, tax collectors, people who had done wrong things. Many in the crowd followed along, 
shocked at what Jesus had done. Jesus is eating with sinners. What's up with that? Zacchaeus simply didn't care what others thought anymore. Spending time with Jesus was changing him from the inside out. He stood up at the table where Jesus and the other guests were having dinner. Look, Lord, here and now, I give half of what I own to those who are poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I, I will pay it back four times the amount I took. Jesus smiled as he looked directly at Zacchaeus. Today, salvation has come to your house. You are a member of Abraham's family line. The Son of Man came to look for the lost and save them. Zacchaeus followed through on his promises. Uh, excuse me, sir. What do you want now? I took three extra gold coins, so I'm paying you back. Wait, what? With 12 gold coins? Like, for reals? Wow! Zacchaeus paid back everyone. Back here! Quick! Take them all! Eight chickens? Aw, they're so cute. Yep, Zacchaeus had become a completely new person on the inside, all because Jesus chose to forgive all the wrong things Zacchaeus had done. a crowbar to open the door from the inside. Oh man, I think I broke something. Oh, well, what Jesus did for Zacchaeus was pretty incredible. I mean, Zacchaeus was a man who lied and cheated people around him, but instead of going down a checklist of all the wrong things Zacchaeus had done, Jesus forgave him in an instant. Jesus even invited himself over for a party. There were still consequences. Zacchaeus paid back four times the money he had stolen, but forgiveness opened the door for him to change. God has always been about forgiveness. From the time Adam and Eve chose to break their relationship with him, God put into motion a plan to restore his relationship with people. So at the right time, God sent his very own son, Jesus, to live among us. And everything Jesus said and did showed the perfect love and forgiveness of his father, God. When we accept God's forgiveness for the wrong things we've done, it starts to change us from the inside out. And when we forgive someone who wrongs us, it can change them too. It opens up the door to restoring that relationship. Like, if you find out your best friend told one of your secrets to someone else, you might be tempted to never let your best friend in again. You could shut them out forever, or you could forgive them. Tell them how what they did made you feel, and then find a way to let it go. It can take a weight off their shoulders, and forgiveness can make you feel better too. So, here's the one thing to remember today. When you forgive others, it can change them. Forgiveness is a way better tool for opening doors than this. Now, where were we? Oh, latch plate. <laughs> I see ya. Now we're talking. Take it away, Mr. Phillips. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna fix the door. <laughs> 